failure and ignorance have a negative connotation in the society it is interesting to ask how does science look at failure and ignorance what is the role of these two elements in the pursuit of science welcome to episode number 6 of pratidwani where we try to humanize science in this episode we're going to discuss about the importance of failure especially in the context of experiments and we'll try to generalize it to science and the sociology of science as you know if you look at uh, media including social media most of the time whenever somebody is discussing science they generally have positive impression about the pursuit of science and also the the output what one gets out of science in terms of either new inventions discoveries or some important breakthroughs is generally looked at in the positive framework but the question to ask is uh, is science a sto- so- story of success always or uh, is there some element of uh, failure in, in the pursuit of science you would be surprised to know that a majority of the times science is a story of failure in fact it is the failure which teaches new lessons it is the failure which will give you new insights and many a times it is failure and ignorance which will lead to some important discoveries and inventions so we're going to discuss how these elements really play a critical role in the pursuit of science if you look at the way one starts doing research and if you look at any research for that matter generally it starts with a question that question can be a curio- curiosity based question or it can be some question related to some fixing of a, an instrument or it can be some important query related to something uh, in the context of human uh, endeavor something you are trying to address and in order to address that particular uh, drawback or some kind of a problem you will have to first frame a question and once you frame the question you will have to find out a method to answer that particular question and the way you answer that question uh, would depend on the methods what you're going to use to address that question Th- generally speaking you can solve a problem by performing an experiment or you will look at uh, some kind of theoretical or computational aspect of the problem and try to solve that problem ultimately one is interested in extracting some meaningful information as an answer and from that particular answer you would be able to connect that to the initial question what you are interested in during this process of asking the question and addressing it either through something called as experiment or through theoretical or computational analysis is very central to the way we perform science and to a large extent even develop technology one is interested in looking at this whole framework in the context of something called as a refined observation okay when we call something as a refined observation one will have to actually talk about looking at facts and understanding these facts from multiple viewpoints let's try to understand this in some detail there is a beautiful book written by a very well known historian and philosopher uh, named uh, alan francis chalmers and the title of the book is what is this thing called science so it's a very interesting book and uh, i'm going to refer to this book uh, quite often in this particular uh, episode and what i found is that this book has elegant explanation of understanding the scientific method understanding what it is to define something called as a theory or an experiment so in this uh, particular book the author also discusses about the motivations of why one does science so to quote the author one point that should be noted is that what is needed in science is not just facts but relevant facts the vast majority of facts that can be established by observation such as 
the number of books in my office or the color of my neighbor's car are totally irrelevant for science and scientists would be wasting their time collecting them which facts are relevant and which are not relevant to a science will be relative to the current state of development of that science science poses the questions and ideally observations can provide answers this is part of the answer to the question of what constitutes a relevant fact for science stop quote this beautifully defines the framework in which one performs an observation and the framework in which one can define something called as a relevant fact so the relevant fact means that that which has some specific implication to a broader context in which one is trying to ask a question philosophy of science especially in the context of understanding the definitions of what it is to call something as experiments and what it is to call a theory is a very very interesting debate throughout the history of mankind in fact there's a lot of debate on these definitions themselves but it is important for us to just get an overview of what kind of definitions people are interested in and then try to use that framework to go further and understand the concepts what we are going to build upon now let's try to understand the definition of experiments okay i'm going to now quote alan again many kinds of processes are at work in the world around us and they are all superimposed on and interact with each other in complicated ways a falling leaf is subject to gravity air resistance and the force of winds and will also rot to some small degree as it falls it is not possible to arrive at an understanding of these various processes by careful observation of events as they typically and naturally occur observations of falling leaves will not eat galileo's law of fall the lesson to be learned here is rather straightforward to acquire facts relevant for the identification and specification of the various processes at work in nature it is in general necessary to practically intervene to try to isolate the process under investigation and eliminate the effects of others in short it is necessary to do experiments stop quote so what he is trying to tell is that when you take some specific natural phenomena or some kind of kind of an observation if you want to really understand the specific cause behind some particular phenomena one should be able to isolate parameters within that particular phenomena which means that there might be multiple aspects related to a particular observation out of those observations you will have to isolate only few parameters and test what happens if you change those parameters in a systematic way this is at the heart of experiments this is also a very important lesson what we can learn while understanding nature or for that matter any problem if you want to solve a specific problem there might be many reasons for that particular problem to arise but if you have to understand that problem one will have to break that problem into smaller pieces and uh, kind of look into the problem as a micro problem and then try to solve them historically many people like thomas kuhn karl popper and many other philosophers have asked this particular questions there has been a lot of debate and actually speaking there is not much consensus in fact if you really look at it very carefully many people including let's say feynman and weinberg and many uh, renowned scientists were very skeptical about the way philosophers looked at this whole process of defining science defining experiments defining theory But nevertheless understanding these elements and definitions will give some kind of uh, direction for anybody who is interested in science so if somebody casually tells that oh i am doing an experiment it means that uh, they are trying to explore something which is slightly unknown and the spirit of the experiment itself is very important you see because you are trying to do something which has not been done either by you or anybody else so therefore one of the most important elements of experiment uh, 
is to go from a known kind of a region of knowledge to an unknown region of knowledge and when you make this transition from the known to unknown you will actually learn something new and hopefully something interesting now the question to ask is uh, is that all is that all that you will be able to do when you perform an experiment and uh, will you always get an answer and uh, it turns out to be it is not the case whenever you perform an experiment or whenever you try to actually understand a theory you are trying to look at this from a framework which is already available in your mind meaning you already have some understanding of some particular topic and you are trying to understand new topic in the context of the old topic and this is one of the beauties of uh, knowledge because you are trying to understand and make sense of the world from a framework of some elements in your mind which is already present and therefore uh, the way you make progress in your thinking and your knowledge is to connect to the past and then uh, go forward and try to understand uh, what is in in front of you within the framework of the experiments itself it is uh, interesting to ask are experiments just a straight forward observations the answer is no as allen uh, tells us if experiments results constitute the fact on which science is based then they are certainly not straight forwardly given via senses they have to be worked for and their establishment involves considerable know-how and practical trial and error as well as exploitation of the available technology now you see the important elements trial and error come into picture this is the most important aspect of performing an experiment when you perform an experiment you will have to actually explore something at the boundary of an unknown quantity and second aspect is you will use technology whichever is available to to you to explore the problem at your hand and this is one of the important aspects of the experiment what is interesting to note is that during this process of trial and error and in the usage of the technology you will have to find something which is totally new you will probably find something totally new or you might end some end up with something which you are not aware of now when you come across this particular kind of situation one will have to ask what you are trying to find out is it something totally new has somebody already thought about it is there some framework to understand the whole thing what one is looking at so these are some of the important questions one will have to address while performing experiments please note that uh, when one is performing experiments the result what you get might have errors and uh, this is true for any kind of human kind activity if you are learning if you are trying to answer a question for example if you tell tomorrow there will be rain and if it turns out to be incorrect then there is an element of error in that particular statement but then one will have to ask why did you make such a statement and if the answer is that i made it arbitrarily then obviously that is not valid statement but if you have some specific intuition and if you have a data to back your intuition then there is some specific weight what you can give to your intuition and there is some element of predictability which comes into picture now again you may tell in spite of the fact that uh, you had the data you turned your your prediction turned out to be wrong and uh, that is one of the important aspects of experiment because whenever one is performing an experiment and extracting some information out of it there is some degree of uncertainty in the information what you obtained so for example if somebody has looked at some specific data and uh, if there is a large error in that particular data and if that person is using that erroneous data and making some prediction uh, 
then there is a large probability that the prediction turns out to be wrong please remember that i am using the term probability here which means that in spite of having wrong data you might actually make sometimes right predictions okay because there is an element of probability associated with this one should be very careful while looking at data and while trying to interpret data per se now you may ask uh, what is all this uh, why should we complicate all these aspects of doing experiments looking at data and other things now the most important thing while doing science is that most of the time we spend in laboratory or let's say a desk or in or, uh, or running codes or doing experiments most of the time we are confronted with these kind of questions we are all always trying to ask the question whether what you are trying to address is correct uh, whether the information what you are obtaining from your experiment from your mathematical analysis from your theoretical framework or from computational approach whether the specific approach itself is correct or incorrect and secondly whatever answer you get from such kind of an approach will will be appropriate and uh, can be used further uh, with certain degree of uh, confidence that confidence generally is not very easy to obtain because it is very much dependent on the fact that you already have a specific probability attached to that particular uh kind of uh, process so this becomes a very critical element while looking at experimentation per se and one should always remember that uh, when one does experiments one is always having some specific doubt in in this particular experimental approach and that is the spirit of experiment so to speak in this context i'll try to discuss something in the context of failure of an experiment so when one does experiment one is trying to address a question which also is generally called as a hypothesis because hypothesis is some kind of a guesswork one does and tries to verify that particular hypothesis through an experiment or a theory but most of the time one is when one is looking at such kind of a hypothesis one it confronts many problems and it happens so that uh, one may not actually be able to find an answer as anticipated a priori to the uh, hypothesis what one has already laid out and this is where science becomes very interesting this is the place where the real learning happens let me give you few examples from the history of uh, science to tell you how failure in experiments have played a very important role the first and probably one of the most well known experiments in physics is something called as michelson morley experiment so to just give you a bit of background uh, michelson and morley were two american scientists two experimentalists who played a very critical role in uh, coming up with an important observation in this particular case a negative observation which formed the basis on which einstein's special theory of relativity was based on michelson was a very celebrated instrumentational experimentalist he was a naval officer and he trained in naval academy and uh, really built one of the biggest and most important kind of viewpoints on measurement of velocity of light michelson uh, his namesake is extensively used in the context of michelson interferometer and uh, for people who may want to know about interferometers it is one of the most uh, important optical instruments used to perform high precision measurements for example even the gravitational wave detection actually uses approaches based on interferometry and uh, michelson's interferometer forms a very important basis for many of these kind of measurements so going back to michelson and morley so michelson and morley experiment uh, was a very important experiment which was taken up 
roughly around 1880s where they were trying to uh, prove the presence of something called as ether okay now ether during that particular time was considered to be some kind of an elastic medium in which light propagates and when light propagates through that medium uh the light is subjected to some kind of a resistance and uh, the hypothesis what michelson and morley were trying to prove is that if you have earth going through this elastic medium called ether and if you place this interferometer which gives you some kind of a fringe which also means some kind of a signal which is very sensitive to the path of light in that particular medium so what they postulated is that if earth goes through this ether and if there is a specific directionality in which light velocity changes because of the presence of the ether then that particular change in velocity should be picked up by these arms of the interferometer and therefore you should get some specific kind of a fringe signal or change in the fringe fringes but what is important in the context of the experiment is that uh, michelson and morley performed this experiment with great uh, kind of tenacity and also with very high accuracy according to the standards which were available then and uh, in spite of multiple measurements they could not find out the presence of ether there is a beautiful book uh, written on uh, this uh, particular concept and the title of uh, the book is called as the ethereal ether a history of michelson morley miller ether drift experiment 1880 to 1930 by uh, lloyd swenson this is a fantastic book which will give you very interesting details about not only michelson and morley but also another important person who played a critical role in establishing the absence of ether and uh, it happens so that uh, the hypothesis with which they started this experiment was to prove the presence of ether so they were trying to measure uh, as i told the velocity of light and also some specific aspects of the interference fringes in the context of the interferometer uh, which was earlier devised by michelson and uh, which was further kind of improved and also uh, material aspects were taken care by morley morley by the way was a chemist uh, he later developed a deep interest in optics and astronomy and joined hands with michelson and their team turned out to be one of the most effective uh, experimental teams which uh, played a critical role in hypothesizing and testing the presence or absence of ether and miller of course later joined morley and refined the experiments which michelson and morley started and further tried to find out a specific uh, reason and also specific kind of experimental techniques were devised by them to formulate hypothesis and then test the presence of ether and of course they too failed in uh, detecting any form of ether at all this history of the experiment itself is very fascinating because it was spread over almost uh, for you know, half a century about 1880 to 1930 a lot of experiments were performed even to date if you look at uh, some of the experiments reported as late as 2009 people are still trying to measure this kind of uh, interference fringes in the context of uh, the question of ether and its presence or absence so the hypothesis really was tested and it turned out to be negative so therefore uh, this w- went on to be a very important postulate in the special theory of relativity of einstein which clearly mentioned that it is very critical that the velocity of the light is considered as constant irrespective of the frame of reference this is one of the important postulates so the velocity of light does not vary depending upon the frame of reference what you are considering this is a foundational tenet on which every aspect of special theory of relativity is derived and uh, understood so therefore if that particular postulate assumption is violated then you end up violating special theory of relativity but what is interesting and also a, a tribute to the great einstein is that particular 
the postulate holds good even to date there is nothing faster than speed of light and uh, the speed of light does not change with respect to the frame of reference one is considering so this is one of the important postulates but you could see that uh, in spite of the fact that there was tremendous amount of experimental knowledge which was used to prove the hypothesis of the presence of ether the experiment failed but it, the failure of the experiment the negative aspect of the experiment turned out to be one of the most foundational principles on which uh, the great special theory of relativity was was uh, postulated and uh, this is an important lesson because without that particular confidence of the negative experiment einstein would have not been able to take that leap of faith and considered that as a foundational principle on which uh, his special theory of relativity was uh, uh, further kind of uh, uh, studied and also explored uh, in various different directions so this is a first and a very important uh, example uh, and uh, the, there is a deep implication both in terms of history of physics and also the philosophy of science itself uh, uh, and uh, this experiment has been now studied in, in various different contexts not only in in uh, establishing the fact that velocity of light is uh, the same irrespective of the frame of reference uh, but also the important aspect is that the way science progressed because of this negative experiment is also been discussed extensively so this is an important uh, uh, lesson what we can learn from a negative experiment in this particular case an experiment which resulted in a null result or so to speak uh, some kind of a failure in in the context of people who are looking at ether and its presence so that is to do with the michelson morley experiment the next example which i want to discuss is closer home literally for indians which is the landing of chandrayana 2 so around 2019 um Indian Space Research Organization launched uh, the mission Chandrayaan 2 where that particular unmanned uh, satellite was trying to land on the other side of the moon or rather the south pole of the moon and uh, unfortunately only at the last kind of few uh, meters away from the landing the contact between the satellite and the Uh, and the communication channels uh, down earth uh, was totally lost so it was almost an experiment which turned out to be a success but what happened was that in the last kind of leg of the landing of that particular satellite unfortunately we lost the the signal and uh, isro which is the indian space research organization uh really made some specific kind of uh, uh, statements which uh, and also gave a lot of information telling that why that particular failure happened and what is the reason behind that and uh, it is an important lesson to to uh, kind of learn from that particular uh, landing because uh, uh, one could see that there were some issues in the way the uh, launching vehicle which actually was kind of coming close to the surface of the moon uh, could not make an established contact and the communication channels were lost so one may call this experiment to be a failure but what is important is that there's a lot of information one gains out of looking at the data what one has extracted from this particular failure there would be a lot of information which will be available which can lead to further important feedback on the way one has to now go ahead and relook at this whole process of landing of the uh, landing of the satellite on the other side of the moon specifically the the south pole of the of the moon so this kind of uh, failed experiments uh one may say oh why is that done why should people uh, care about it and things like that but what is important is that we are literally trying to do something which has not been attempted uh, very often which means that the technical challenges one will have to face to accomplish such kind of a feat uh is not an easy thing and uh, 
ISRO has probably one of the most remarkable records in the history of Indian science and technology uh, for doing uh, something which uh, no other space agencies have been able to do. For example, Mangalyaan, uh, which is one of the uh, missions to Mars, actually was uh, taken up uh, with the re- at, at an extremely uh, you know great uh, kind of uh, uh, vision and also some very ingenuity uh, at a cost which is much much uh, smaller than many other uh, missions which is really a, a commendable achievement uh, so to speak i should also mention that uh, isro is an organization which i have very high regards towards because i was also a honors diploma in space science uh thanks to professor g shrinivasan at uh, raman research institute when i was an undergrad i uh, was uh, kind of uh, you know uh, uh, interacting with professor shrinivasan uh, who gave us series of lectures on astrophysics and various elements of um, elements related to astronomy and some aspects of space science as part of that uh, honors uh, course which was some kind of an informal course beautifully thought some very good people also were teaching that particular course along with professor shrinivasan and uh, as part of that course we were taken to a field trip to isro and uh, i had the privilege of uh, uh, seeing insat 3c uh, at a distance about a few meters away and within few months from then the satellite was launched and uh, successfully launched and uh, i also visited shrihari kota which was one of the you know remarkable things i have seen in my in my life where uh, they also launch uh, uh, the rockets and uh, it's it's a beautiful and uh, great achievement uh, within the framework of indian science and technology so in that sense uh, isro is a, uh, has a excellent kind of uh, you know a vision to look at uh, what can be done in the context of uh, science and technology and it's a i want to believe that they are forward looking organization and i think uh, that is a great spirit i think they should continue to have and inspire people especially children and also adults for that matter and i hope uh, they are going to continue to inspire uh, a lot of people like me and others within my own research um especially in the context of something called as plasmonics which is an area of research where uh, one is looking at uh, some kind of metals for example gold silver these metals when they are shrunk to few hundreds of nanometers or in certain cases sub 100 nanometer they can give rise to very strong optical response which means that if you shine light on them they can scatter very strongly they can also absorb light very strongly in certain cases now uh, in this context of the so called plasmonics uh, because it is something kind of trying to come up with a parallel to let's say photonics and electronics so the hypothesis which was uh, very prominent during uh, 2000s was that plasmonics which is the uh, interaction of light with these metal structures can potentially lead to new kind of optical circuits so that was the hypothesis which was already postulated then and there was intense amount of research now as this particular area evolved it turned out to be the uh, uh, negative meaning uh, instead of having this particular kind of plasmonic elements very sensitive and also very effective for optical circuits there was a, a big drawback because when you shine light on such kind of metals there's a lot of heat which is dissipated from those metals so if you want to build optical circuits using such kind of uh, small nanostructured metals one will have to incur a huge loss in the incoming light and the outgoing light which means that this creates a lot of problems in devising circuits and therefore that idea slowly had to be kind of altered and therefore that gave rise to some new concepts called as uh, meta materials dielectric photonics and things like that what is interesting is that all was not in the futile effort because the so called uh, heat dissipation turned out to be extremely advantageous in some other uh, in some other context 
for example if you take such kind of metallic nanostructures and if you illuminate light on such kind of metallic nanostructures one would be able to create gradients of temperature which are extremely confined to a small region which means that you can use these kind of small nanostructures to create localized heat sources and where will you use that localized heat sources well you can use them in biological experiments in some kind of uh, context where you would want to actually have a local source of temperature there is an important area of research which is called as photothermal therapy in which uh, the heat generated by incidenting light on such kind of structures can be used to let's say kill cancer cells or some kind of uh, cells which actually have been affected due to some element and uh, this particular idea can now be used very effectively to target some specific uh, parts of the tissues which may have some kind of cancerous cells which are which is uh, present there so therefore what was supposed to be an disadvantage can now be turned around and used as an advantage so if one looked at initial experiments in the context of optical circuits they turned out to be a failure but uh, later on one figured out the concept of so called thermoplasmonics which turned out to be a very important correction or rather the important uh, application of the so called plasmonics and nowadays it is one of the most important areas of research within the framework of so called nanophotonics and uh, it also has turned out to be an important uh, kind of uh, extension to uh, utilizing plasmons also for detecting molecules down to the single molecule limit so therefore uh, one will always have to be very careful when one is looking at the conceptual failures and uh, technical failures in science because what turns out to be a failure in one context can turn out to be an important advantage in a, in a different context so therefore whenever one is performing science uh, I, one is always looking at these particular kind of failures and trying to understand uh, uh, how one can utilize failures and turn them into advantages so this is to do with the failure and also the element of ignorance is equally important now ignorance means that you are at the boundary of the knowledge and you do not know some aspects of the knowledge which is still at the boundary in the sense you are at the edge of the knowledge and there are some things which are unknown to you so therefore it is important for you to theorize or perform experiments and look at that boundary and do a specific analysis at that particular boundary in this context ignorance plays a very critical role now uh, there is a professor called as stuart frankenstein who is a biologist uh, he is a neuroscientist in university of columbia and uh, he teaches a very interesting course uh, called as ignorance it's a course the course name it's, itself is called as ignorance in fact it's so popular that this particular course has turned out to be a book and uh, he's written a very interesting book uh, titled ignorance how it drives science i would strongly suggest you to have a look at that book of course i'm i'll be giving all the the information in the context of uh, the references in the show notes and that is something i would strongly uh, suggest you to have a look at it but what is interesting about this book uh, is that he 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 talks about how important it is uh that uh, one has a good grasp of ignorance and how it leads to uh, sciences and i'll just read out some aspects from the introduction of this book which is very interesting so he starts in the following way it is very difficult to find a black cat in a dark room wants wants an old proverb especially when there is no cat this strikes to me as a particularly apt description of how science proceeds on day to day basis it is certainly more accurate than the more common metaphor of scientists patiently piecing together a giant puzzle with a puzzle you see the manufacturer has guaranteed there is a solution i know this view of scientific process feeling around in dark rooms bumping into unidentified things looking for barely perceptible phantoms 
is contrary to the that held of many people especially by non scientist when most people think of science i suspect they imagine nearly 500 year old long systematic pursuit of knowledge that over 14 or so generations has uncovered more information about the universe and everything in it than all that was known in the first 5000 years of the recorded human history stop quote he beautifully explains that um, it is important for us to get grasp of what it is that science is so he he very nicely mentions that science is not about success stories but it is about the ignorance it is about the failures uh, which which plays a very critical role in in understanding uh, uh, how how science it's, itself is done so he teaches this particular course and uh, he talks a little bit more about uh, this particular course and uh, to quote him again from uh, the page 5 of his book at the heart of the course are sessions i hesitate to call them classes in which a guest scientist talks to a group of students for a couple of hours about what he or she doesn't know they come and tell us about what they would like to know what they think is critical to know how they might get to know it and what will happen if they do find this or that thing out what might happen if they don't about what could be known what might be impossible to know and what they didn't know 10 to 20 years ago and know now or still don't know why they want to know this and not that this more than that in some they talk about the current state of their ignorance stop quote this is beautiful so this is an important lesson you, you see what he is trying to tell is that there is a specific kind of a process of thought which exclusively things about what we don't know and he he gives a very strong case of learning things from this viewpoint because he devised this particular course specifically for senior undergraduate students who are majoring in biology and he makes a point telling that uh, it is important for students especially as they uh, get slightly higher knowledge to understand what is unknown and this makes a very important case of knowing the foundations of the subject and you also will get the most important f- kind of uh, view points uh, of why to perform science itself and this gives you a reason why you should venture into the science going further and it also gives you a fantastic context in which science actually is performed and this was very impressive in fact it's a less than 200 pages notebook and uh, it's extremely impressive uh, kind of uh, a book i would strongly suggest you to have a look at it uh, it's by oxford university press and uh, it makes very pertinent points it talks about various different uh, issues related to ignorance and again the emphasis of statistical analysis and also the way to look at the quality of ignorance and the limits uncertainties impossibilities and minor problems unpredictabilities and also he uh, he gives very interesting case histories and uh, gives uh, elaborate uh, references in the suggested reading where you can get a very good intuition of what it is to 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 have an intuition about ignorance itself so that is a very impressive uh, kind of viewpoint where failure and ignorance plays such a critical role in in our understanding of science and development of science and technology this this means that uh, these particular sociological aspects of ignorance and failure should not be taken very lightly in fact they are part and parcel of doing research and that is something which we will always have to keep in mind when we talk about scientific research scientific methods because uh, they play such a critical role in uh, expanding our thoughts and pushing the boundaries of knowledge If you're interested I have also written a blog about uh, the importance of uh, negative results in the context of experiments I'll be anyway linking that also in the show notes please have a look at it <clears throat> I would also uh, want to bring to your attention that uh, doing experiments in the context of uh, research is one thing students also perform experiments in as part of their education and uh, this is an important problem because uh, in in conventional education laboratory 
uh, is not a, an important part unfortunately for various different reasons and uh, that is a culture which has to drastically change especially in india because what turns out to be an important step to probably understand science in a deeper sense comes from a laboratory in fact especially in natural sciences and also in engineering uh, the laboratory element is as important as theoretical knowledge it is important to have both of them uh, one cannot survive without the other and therefore for the progress of science a very strong culture of laboratory uh, practices has to be developed and schools and colleges have to really emphasize more on the laboratory element of understanding and doing science and that is something which is an acute problem in india uh, because uh, the foundations on which let's say engineering or any kind of translation research is performed is very strongly founded on the experimental sciences in natural sciences so therefore physics chemistry biology which forms the foundations of natural sciences along with mathematics are probably the most important foundations you cannot build great buildings without good foundations so these four aspects of uh, uh, science and mathematics are the most important foundations on which all aspects are built further especially in the context of sciences and in the technological uh, aspects uh, including engineering so therefore uh, we should not ignore this kind of viewpoint of experimentation and uh, it is imperative that uh, we encourage Uh, performing experimental kind of uh, uh, explorations uh, as part of our education now i'll end uh, this episode quoting uh, peter mewar who was one of the celebrated uh, uh, scientist a, a biologist and also a nobel laureate and uh, he is considered as one of the uh, foremost uh, exponents of uh, understanding science and also kind of interfacing science with society and he's written a beautiful book uh, called as advice to a young scientist and in there he quotes a, a very uh, he he tells us about a very interesting aspect of experiments and uh, i quote him here all experimentation is criticism if an experiment does not hold out the possibility of causing one to revise one's view it is hard to see why it should be done at all stop quote so what he is mentioning is experimentation is itself as a form of a criticism you would be able to learn something by refining an experiment by asking the question and trying to experiment and uh, figuring out what are the possibilities so this is to do with the importance of failure in experimentation and science in general and uh, i would request you to uh, kind of share this particular episode with whomsoever is interested this particular episode is also slightly bordering the philosophy of science uh, where also i have given some kind of examples from the history of science but what is important uh, for us is that uh, this kind of scientific process and thought uh, process is, is something which should be very common knowledge among uh, citizens uh, not only in india but across the world and uh, therefore uh, pratidwani which is trying to humanize science is trying to make an attempt uh, towards that particular uh, goal and uh, i hope uh, all of you would be uh, kind of helping me to achieve this particular goal so i would again request you to share this particular uh, podcast with anybody who is interested as i mentioned it's a non commercial platform and uh, therefore it is important for us to actually uh, kind of uh, spread the importance of science uh, uh, across uh, uh, across the country and uh, hopefully across the world to make this particular world a better place to live and also uh, a better place for the future gener- generations to come thank you very much and see you in the next episode